Actually, I'm going to now hand off to Edward as he shares a demo around OpenAI function calling, particularly in Python, because he uh, did a lot of the, the lion's share of the work to bring that uh, to parity in the in the Python semantic kernel. So, Edward, I'll pass to you, yep. and feel free to share your screen, give the context of of what you did. Let me first share, and uh, I'm going to go straight into uh, VS Code. Uh, yeah, so indeed, um, um, we finally have the uh, the function calling from OpenAI also in the semantic kernel. Um, I think this is um, really one of the, the key things that OpenAI added to the model in the, in the last couple of months, where uh, they basically did fine tuning in order to come back with really good responses that are proper JSON pretty much all of the time. Um, which is useful either if you want to structure your output uh, because it gives back structured JSON, or, and that's um, uh, the, the second part that I'll be showing, when you uh, actually want to have a chat that can call these different functions um, and then use that to do the final completion. Um, so both of those scenarios we have a sample for, so I'm just going to walk through that and then also show a bit of what's happening uh, in the back of that. Uh, I zoomed in quite a bit, so I hope it's um, uh, it's readable, uh, the text. Um, so let's let's walk through this first sample. This is the OpenAI function calling uh, sample. Um, and this is really a basic one. So um, up until basically this point, uh, it's just the generic sample uh, of you know setting up kernel adding um, uh, chat GPT to it or a GPT model. Um, one note on that is that you do need to have the latest version of the GPT 3.5 or 4 models, so the 0.6.13 uh, ones. Um, and then on the Azure side, you need the 2023.07.01 um, um, preview or newer uh, API versions because there they enabled it. Um, and then the first thing you, that you need to add is, is this function call is auto. Um, so this function call is actually something that you can play around with because you can do three things basically. Either say none, and then it doesn't do function calling. Do auto, and then it chooses from a list of available functions. Or you can give it the name of the function you actually want to call. So if you really want to have control over exactly which function it's doing and then really use it more to uh, let the model decide on the, the parameters then actually choosing the function as well then you can also fill in the name of the function for this uh, parameter um, then everything else is pretty much normal and then we come into the function definitions so this sample um, uses a um, your own function definition basically so this does not have to be in your code or even in this application. This can also just be the way you want to have your output. Um, in this case, it's saying um, my function, and I only have one, is called search hotels, and it has location, max price, and features as, um, as the properties, and then the location is the only required one. Um, so this is what you pass along. So if you then look at what happens when we run it, um, we basically just run the normal invoke async on the on the chat function with the functions object in there. Um, my input is I want to find a hotel in Seattle with a free Wi-Fi in a pool. And then it um, does the call. It checks if there's a function call object in the objects within the, the context. And if so, it uh, displays them. So let's uh, quickly run this one. Um, and there it is. Uh, it's giving me back that it wants to call search hotels, and it's giving back these um, uh, these parameters. If I now add um, my max price is uh, two hundred dollars, and then run it, then you will see that it's doing what it's supposed to do by adding data as a parameter as well. So here you can see the max price uh, being um, uh, supplied back to you as well. Um, one of the things that we added in order to make this work is that we added a objects 
uh, field into the context. Um, and this is basically a dictionary where we can store these kinds of things that are not text. Um, so in this case, we're using it for function calls, but I can imagine in the future that we might also use it to have like the full opening our object in there because then you can have a look at um, every detail of the call that came back rather than just uh, the text that we that we currently parse and, and put into the, the strings in the context. So that's the, the first uh, sample. So this is super basic. Now let's move to the um, more extensive one because a lot more comes into it. And this is really to do chat with function calling as part of it. Uh, so in order to use this, I actually need to make some changes to my imports. Um, next to the regular chat prompt, um, chat, chat prompt template, we now have a OpenAI chat prompt template. Um, and then we have a couple of utility functions that we use to to make this work. Uh, that we had a lot of back and forth with the team to figure out, okay, do we want to put this in the kernel itself or in the context or in the functions? Or do we want to keep it outside because this is specific to OpenAI models? Uh, other models, as far as we have them in, in Python, don't have this feature. Um, so therefore, we decided to leave it out of the kernel itself, but do supply these utility functions that make it super easy to work with. Um, so the kernel setup is the same. Here we're adding a bunch of skills into it. So we're adding the, the fun skill and the math skills from the from the core skills. Once again, we have function call auto. Um, and now we actually use this opening a chat prompt template. Um, other than that, it's, it's this is a subclass, so it works exactly the same. Um, and there's mostly something in the back that I'll show in a second. Um, and now we use the first uh, function, uh, first utility function here, this get function calling object. And basically what this allows you to do is um, create these function definitions that JSON that we had in the first example from all of the registered functions in the curve. So you don't have to write that out yourself. You don't have to manually keep track of that. If you add a um, add a function in your kernel or a, a skill or plugin, as it will be called, to um, that will all be pulled out um, in this in this object in the right format. You can also filter it. So in this case, I am filtering it that it doesn't uh, include the chatbot itself because. Um, it, it's not supposed to be able to call the chatbot as a function. Um, so we filter that out. And I can also add other filters to make sure that, you know, I don't want to do the math, but I do want to do the, the fun skills or vice versa and stuff like that. Um, then um, we have some, some boilerplate around it in order to do uh, chat continuously. Uh, and then the biggest change is here, where we don't actually call the kernel and then this function or, or the function and then, uh, you know, the invoke async or run async or one of those. We actually call this chat completion with function call method. Um, we pass it the kernel, we pass it the, um, the name of, of the chat skill, and then we pass it this function object um, as well as uh, this parameter that was just added. So this is not in the in the release from uh, yesterday, um, but in the, in the new PR. So hopefully this will be added soon. Um, and then everything else works exactly the same. So from um, from the, the main developer perspective, it looks very similar. It's just using this chat completion with function call rather than the normal one. So now uh, here in the bottom, I have a chat, so I can just do what is uh, three plus three, three plus three, and it comes back with six. Um, obviously not a very hard one. Uh, if I do uh, then uh, it will have a bit um, more to do, um, but it does come back with the with the answer. So you know uh, that just works. Um, I also have the the fun skills, so I can also um, use that to to uh, tell me a joke. And then it comes back with a joke, and we all know that they're uh, iffy at best, but that's fine. But then we can do more interesting things. So for instance, I can also do tell me a joke about answer to. And what will happen now, and 
I can show it here, but I can show it in a second, is that it's actually doing two function calls. So first it's doing the function call to do uh, four plus four, and then it's doing the function call to do tell me a joke. And as part of that, it will uh, use the answer of the previous function to do this. So let's um, take a take a step into the code. So uh, let me put a breakpoint in there. Um, So now uh, when I step into it, um, you will see some of the things that are happening. Did it wrong. Mm -hmm. Went too quickly. There we go. So this is the actual um, utility function that we're using for this. Um, it has a, a lot of uh, text in the doc, so that makes it hopefully easy to use. Um, and basically what happens here is um, we're first getting the, the chat function out of the, um, the definitions. We're checking to see if you're actually using the OpenAI chat prompt template because it needs that. Then it's just the regular call to invoke async. Um, and then it, we check if there's a function call in the, uh, in the context. And if so, um, if not, then we return the context. And if so, we do the actual function call here. Um, we have another helper for that, but uh, let me first go uh, through this because then you will see some of the uh, pieces where it's uh, coming back. So here uh, in my chat prompt template, this is where we actually see all these things happening. So let's see if I can make it slightly bigger. So all of this chat so far is all in here. So here we see the, uh, in number four, we see the uh, assistant, the content was empty, but there was a function call. So this was the math add for three plus three. Um, and then we have the response from the function. And in this case, that was just a simple math function uh, that is being uh, added to the whole chat history that we, that we built up. So if we go scroll down a bit to, um, tell me a joke about the answer to four plus four, then you can see here that it's, oh, it's actually not doing, uh, it's actually just skipping the math part. It's straight doing the, uh, the fun scale, but with the input, with the right answer. So if we would have given it a bit more complex uh, question, then maybe it would have done that. But here you can see that the flow of the chat is actually being added to with all of these function calls. Um, then in this um, this piece here, what it's doing is it's calling this other helper function, which is basically taking the uh, name that is in the function call. The name in the function call is actually the scale name and in the function name. Um, but we added a helper to split it so that you can easily pass it into this uh, thing. And then the context, and then it's just a, a regular run async call. So again, just using uh, the normal pieces of, uh, of semantic kernel for this. Um, and then one of the other uh, things that we that are now added is the ability to you to reuse the context. So if you set this parameter to true, then it creates a new context for the function call. So it's kind of stepping out with a new context, doing the call, and then using the response of that back into the uh, uh, the main context. But you can also uh, add the uh, parameters of the function call into your existing context. So if you, for instance, use the um, the text skills, the text memory skill, then you want to store the, um, the collection name and all of those pieces once in your main program and then have that available as you do function calling with that. So that's why that is in there. And then um, after the function call executes, uh, the result is actually added through this special add function response message that is only part of the OpenAI chat prompt template, or not the regular chat prompt template. And then it calls itself. So it's actually um, it, or recursively calling itself until it's uh, completed, until no more function calls are returned. But there is a fail safe in there because it's using this current call count and max function calls. And if those are the same, so by default it's, it's five, uh, then it's actually just passing an empty list to the functions parameter so that it has no functions to choose from and always comes back with, com with the completion and uh, exits the, the loop. Um, so within the 
chat prompt template for this, we now have these OpenAI chat messages. Um, the whole chat message itself is also introduced with this uh, PR, and the normal one is just the role and then the content. Uh, and we separate the content into fixed content and then the template so that we can render, uh, create the fixed content, and then make sure that uh, you don't overwrite your uh, your content uh, template every uh, or you re-render every template with new input because that would also be strange. Um, and then the opening chat message actually just adds the name and function call uh, in order to have that uh, the complete message that opening eye. Uh, APIs expect when you uh, when you do function calling, um, and then this one is also the, the OpenAI chat prompt template is also uh, basically the same, just adds this uh, function response and it's using OpenAI chat message as the um, as the type rather than the regular chat message. So, in essence, we've we've tried to really make sure that. Um, most of the details that come into it, other than the ones you actually need to know when you want to use it, are abstracted away either by these um, opening eye chat prompt templates and, and things like that, or by these uh, utility functions. Um, and as much as possible, this sample looks very similar to the regular chat API sample, but then uh, just with this um, with this function rather than the chat function uh, run async. So, any um, any questions before I hand it back to to Alex? This is really good, Edward. I guess in interest of time, I guess the the real quick question is, three five Turbo versus GPT four. How does it compare when you're using function calling? Um, so so far, the, and this is really why I'm I'm a big fan of function calling. I haven't seen. I've heard that there. Were, have been hallucinations when you do too many functions and, and too many parameters and things like that. And that that occurs quicker with 3.5 than with 4, which is kind of obvious because 4 is a more advanced model. But other than that, uh, it's just been rock solid. And um, and I think, you know, like I, like I said in the beginning, the, the, the ability to get structured output almost without fail is super useful. And then um, uh, for me, this this chat scenario where you can have these functions being called without having to worry about orchestrating that is also super useful. So, uh, yeah, I've, I'm I'm a big fan. Nice, awesome. Well, thank you, Edward, for for walk, walking us through this, and thank for contributing the the code for Python. So, if anyone wants to give feedback, I mean, you can find Edward on GitHub or or wherever. So.